Hello, this is Python in Excel, part 14. This is gonna be a bit of a longer one. We're gonna look at some custom classes and ways we can modify how the Excel method works even further than we did before. So first of all, I wanna note that I have a table here which has about 60,000 records. I've pulled that from the AdventureWorks Data Warehouse 2019 database, which you can get with SQL Server Express edition. I've got it in this table, which is Fact Internet Sales. Here I have created a data frame called DF intro. I'm using the Excel method on the table. Here I'm showing the first few rows of that data frame. Down here, I am trying to sum the DF intro sales amount column. So this Excel B12 is pointing to this cell here and it's returning that text. That text is being passed into the index of DF intro and it's not working because the column over here is actually with capital S and capital A. If I change that, you can see that it will recalculate and it will actually give me the number. But because Python is case sensitive, it doesn't work if I do that. Coming from an Excel background, that might be kind of annoying. So let's see what we can do about it. Before we solve that problem, we really need to talk about classes. A class is a way of grouping certain kinds of objects together into a class and we can assign properties to the class and we can give the class methods. And this is a very simple example of a demonstration class so we can just talk about a few concepts. First of all, a class is defined with the class we keyword and we give the class a name. It's usually good practice to use capital case for a class name, so I've done that here. At the top of a class, if you want the class to be useful to other people, you should put what's called a doc string. And a doc string is enclosed in triple double quotes. And this piece of text is a statement that describes what the class is for. Every class should have a function called init, surrounded by double underscores. And within the init function definition, we always begin with self. And self lets us refer to an instance of this class when the class is used. I have added some additional parameters called a parameter and another parameter. I've also got a doc string for the init so that when I try to access the help for this init function, it will show me this doc string. Within this function, I am setting the a property property of the self instance to the value of the parameter that was passed into this class. Similarly, another parameter is setting this self dot another property property of the instance. Underneath that, I've got a function where I pass a number. Again, note that we begin with self. We always begin with self, otherwise it's not much use. And we pass a number as a separate parameter. This is just what I've done for this example. I've got a doc string telling me that it returns an F string. Now an F string is an interesting concept in Python. If you put an F before uh, some quotes where you've got a string, you can format your arguments or variables into that string using braces. So I can say you entered, open brace, a name of a variable, argument, parameter, whatever it may be, close brace and then close the string. And this is an F string. And what will be returned is say I pass the number 55 into a number. What will be returned by this is you entered 55. Finally, I've got another function which I don't have any additional arguments. I've just got the self argument. I've got a doc string describing what it does and it literally just returns an F string that returns the another property property of the instance. So all of that might be quite confusing if you've never heard of classes before, but let's see how it works. D equals class demo and the init function is executed when I create an instance of a class and I can pass the arguments into it at that time. We don't pass an argument in for the self parameter. So let's start with uh, a parameter equals value for a parameter and another parameter equals value for another parameter. Now this is a bit all a bit silly, but this is an example to show you how it works. So that has instantiated the class demo into this variable called D. Now D is an object of type class demo and it has these properties. First of all, let's show what happens when we type the help function. So Python has this help function. You can put any class or object into it and we can just put help D. We can see 
help on class demo in module main object. It shows me the structure. It shows me the methods. It shows me the doc strings within each method. So a function returns the F string, you entered a number. To view a property is really simple. We just put D dot A, the name of the property. That is returning the value for a parameter because remember that is the value that we passed into the class instantiation line up here. Similarly, D dot another, oops, if I could type that would be helpful. Property shows me the value for another property. And if I want to use a function, I can say D dot a function and this, I give it some text, some text because this has that argument it returns the F string, you entered some text. So that is a very lightning fast introduction to classes. I'm sure I haven't done it justice, but let's move on. Okay, I have defined a class here called XLDF. And you will note that inside the parentheses of the class name, I've got PD.DataFrame. When I do that, what I am doing is creating a subclass of a data frame, which means that XLDF by default has all the methods and properties and capabilities of a pandas data frame, in addition to the stuff that I'm going to add in this class. When somebody creates a class of XLDF, they will pass a data frame into it. That data frame will be known as self within this class. And each data frame has this dot columns property, which lists the columns of the data frame. This list comprehension returns a list of the lowercase version of those columns. Super with parens refers to the parent class of this object. And the parent class of XLDF is the pandas data frame. When someone calls this object, run this initialization procedure. As part of this initialization procedure, initialize the data frame itself, and then set the lower columns property of the current instance to be this list comprehension. Clear as mud, right? Just as an example of how this works, I've created a sum function within this XLDF class. And the sum function accepts this column argument. And the column argument can either be a pandas series or a string of the column name. So here's the doc string. Return the sum of the column after replacing not a numbers with zero. We're going to try if the type of the column is a series, return sum of column dot fill na and remember fill na will fill in that column any rows that have na with whatever value we give here so we're filling we're replacing the nas with zero and then we're returning the sum if the type of the column argument is not a pandas series the assumption is that it's a string so convert the column to lowercase and look for it in the lower columns list and return the index i.e. the position of that column within the list of columns and put it in this column index variable. Find the column index within the data frame, which is referred to with self, fill the NAs with zero and return the sum. And if neither of those things work, I'm raising a custom error, which will display this text. Provide a column name as a string or a pandas series from the data frame. I want this to be the default object produced by the Excel method. Now, if you remember from an earlier video, we can change the, the default object from an Excel method by creating a function with this signature, X headers and keyword args, and returning whatever data structure, whatever data type we want to return. So in this example, I'm using the built-in Excel convert to data frame, and I'm wrapping the data frame produced by that because that function returns a pandas data frame and my XLDF class expects a pandas data frame and returns a class of type XLDF. In order to make that the default behavior of the Excel method, I use this array conversion and I pass the name of my custom method as the only argument to that function. All of what we just talked about is happening on this init sheet which is to the left of this data sheet, which means everything that was done on the init sheet is in effect for every sheet to the right, including the data sheet. And what that means is that this call to Excel produces an object of type XLDF, which includes that lower columns property and also includes that sum method. So when I execute this, 
It will create the data frame DF, which is of type XLDF, and will prove it by printing the type to the diagnostics pane. So you can see that it says B8, which is here, the classes of main XLDF. The whole reason of doing this was first to talk about classes, talk about F strings, talk about doc strings and all of that good stuff. But really it was so that I can use df.sum as a method and pass into it a string which doesn't pay attention to the capitals or the lowercase or whatever it might be. I still want to be able to sum it in a way that is intuitive to an Excel user and that's using a sum function. And that has returned the correct result and it doesn't matter how the text is cased or how it's cased in the data frame object. I really appreciate you watching. I hope it's made sense. I think it was quite difficult to explain, but if you have any questions, please just let me know.